Hey everybody, welcome to Final Stitch. I'm Natalie with Missouri Star Quilt Company and today we're going to talk about binding curves or circles and I'm excited to get to it. Sandra Van Houston asked us on our trimming and squaring your quilt episode, mm -hmm. if I round the corners, will it change the way I bind? We've also been asked by Tanya, Natalie, once we've cut our rounded corners, can you show us how to sew the binding on the curve, please, and thank you. Okay, so two questions, two answers. First, let's start by cutting some bias binding. I will go through that real quick, and then we will stitch some binding onto a curve. I've got a circle that we can work with. So, but let's start with cutting bias binding first. Okay. Um, often, it seems more complicated than it really is, and I've learned a few tricks. There's rulers out there that help, but um, I'm just gonna show you with a basic straight ruler, things we commonly have at home. One of the things that is tricky is the, the width, and a lot of times you'll see people cutting a half a yard. Well, a half a yard is great if your ruler can can stretch that far, but the longest one I have is this six by 24. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and lay the 45 down here like this. And you'll see, if you look at the measurement from this bottom down here up to here, the tallest I can get is about 17 inches. So that's an inch shorter than a half a yard, but that is what I'm gonna cut my width to so that uh, my ruler fits all the way across. So just a, a little trick that I use. And I don't find that that inch bothers me too much as far as having long enough strips. I think it works just great. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go 17 inches here. And I'm just cutting with the fabric yardage to start. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, straighten this other edge just because I want, when we cut, when you cut your, your binding strips on the bias, you're gonna use both of those edges. So I just wanna make sure this one is nice and straight. And it just has like a tiny bit of a curve to it. So I'm gonna straighten that out. Oh, that didn't go all the way down there, but that's okay. All right, <clears throat> next thing you're gonna do is open it up because we're gonna cut this way now. And these little stripes are gonna go on the bias and they're gonna look oh, so cute. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so you can turn any stripe into a bias stripe if you cut it on the bias. Absolutely. And those are the best ones, they're so cute. <laughs> okay, so your ruler on both corners, you'll see these lines, and they're the 30, 45, and 60, and they make all these different designs if you use if you know how to use them. So you're gonna pick, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, right-handers are gonna go this direction, left-handers will go this direction. Okay. So adjust to what's comfortable for you and, and which, which style you wanna use. So I line my tool. What I do to get the most out of it and to start, I try and start from this corner and you can absolutely go back and use the rest of this triangle, but I usually just kind of cut the middle chunk first, and then if that's enough, great, and if I need the, the smaller pieces, I'll use them. Okay. And I, I'll show you one when we get there. All right, so I'm gonna start by lining up my 45 degree angle right along the bottom edge of this cut fabric, and I'm gonna scoot it over until I'm out of the way of the selvage, and that's gonna be my first cut. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside for now. And then what I'm gonna do is continue cutting using the 45 along the bottom and lining up two and a half inches wide using my ruler. So you'll see I'm still cutting a two and a half inch wide strip, but I'm using the 45 down here. And because of the way this is cut, these pieces are going to uh, match up when you get ready to sew okay. your strips together. So you don't actually have to do the, the crossover. Um, you'll still cross them over, but it looks just a little bit different. Okay. So let me cut a few strips and then we'll get to sewing them together. So you, this, it should look right when you have the corner of your 24 inch ruler on 
the edge of the fabric and your 45 degree line along the bottom of the fabric. Yep, and then you're also gonna look at your two and a half inch on marks and make sure that you're getting the right width. Now, if you're, if you're cutting, say you had a half, half a yard and you wanted to go that extra inch, just slide your ruler up as you go. It's not that big of a deal. I just find it makes it easier for me. Mm -hmm. So no big deal either way. I, I've also found that it, it feels like you get a lot more binding strips, but I don't know if that's accurate or not. <laughs> it feels like it. Yeah, sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna keep on going here. All right, so I'm getting to the end of my uh, strip of fabric here, and you can see that I have a little bit of a corner down here, right here in this section. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this strip, and then I'm gonna show you how to fix that end. All right, and this will apply to the whole rest of this because it's not gonna, you don't have that straight line at the bottom anymore, now you're working with the end. So what you're gonna do, is um and and just to check myself i would pull out a, a previously cut strip to make sure i'm going the right direction okay so these are still going this way which means your straight line down here needs to go that way so you're going to put your uh 45 degree angle along the side of your strip on this top side and then all you do is cut straight along the bottom i'll move that out of the way and then you've got that same straight line that's gonna line up with all the rest of your strips. All right, I can do one more, no problem. <clears throat> at this point, I don't have that, that straight line at the bottom to line up my 45, so I'm just trusting that I cut straight enough that as I continue with my two and a half inch strips, they're gonna be straight. Okay. So again, to get that bottom line, I'm gonna line my 45 degree angle on the side of the strip. And just, if you're worried, double check it with a different one. And that is gonna give us that same cut. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then I'm gonna come at it from this side being right-handed. Sorry, there we go. And then all of your strips will have that lovely 45 degree angle cut and they'll fit together great. Okay. Okay, so now we're ready to join these strips together and it's pretty simple. Um, you're still gonna use your little T method, the, the cross plus method. You wanna make sure that you overlap these by a quarter of an inch and then sew in that little um, in the little valley. That will keep your strips lined up so that when you open them up, they're not offset. Okay, so you might be tempted to line them up. Perfectly. You might be, but don't do it. Okay. Overlap by a quarter of an inch or the width of your seam, really, but hopefully it's pretty close. And then just sew straight across. And these should all match because we've cut them all using that correct angle. Just continue to join them. I flip this one straight over and then make sure my first piece goes out and I don't actually make, make a loop. <laughs> accidentally make a circle. <laughs> not yet. It's not time for that. Okay. And then this one goes face up and we overlap by a quarter of an inch. All right. How would someone know how many strips they're going to need when using this method? Well, um, so typically when you cut binding from straight grain, it's 40 inches, 45. I, I usually uh, count by 40 just to make sure I have enough. And these ones, um, so measure your strip. These ones actually are closer, and I measure from, from the uh, inner part of the cut. Okay. Just to, to get an idea, this one's about 22 inches, so you'd need twice as many of these as your normal okay. 45 or 40. 
So, uh, That's pretty you know, if you, if you cut eight strips normally for right. whatever size quilt, then you're going to want 16 of these. Okay. So good deal. But yeah, it's just the length, however long your strip is. And then you need to know the length of your whole quilt. So add your two sides and your top and bottom, and then, um, divide that by this number and you'll know how many strips to cut. Okay. Yeah. Pretty simple. And we have calculators on our phone, so <laughs> <laughs> no need to work too hard at it. All right, line it up and keep on sewing. Okay, I think that I have a little circle I can use for a quick demonstration and three ought to be plenty to go around that. So let me press this. And you press it the same way, just be gentle because it's bias and it will stretch. So you don't wanna, you can see how easily it pulls. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna pull too hard. Um, and but that stretch is actually like the magic of the bias. The, like it's your best there. friend in this situation. Cause it will gently stretch around the curve instead of mm -hmm. beating and getting yep. in the way. Yeah, so you're still still pressing it in half, just like our traditional binding. Okay, so, um, I'm just going to stitch it on this curve, this circle that we just cut out of quilted fabric. It's just one layer thick, no big deal. And I'm going to make sure and leave a good chunk, maybe like six to eight inches. Okay. It's a small circle, so I won't need that much when I go to close it, but, um, but I want to be able to get around it and show you. So I'm still putting this, to me, this, this green is the top. I'm still going to add it to the top. You can do whichever direction you want. Okay. But, uh, Typically, I mean, binding, if you're hand binding, stitch it on the top, flip it around, hand bind it to the back. And you're just gonna go slow. You're gonna line it up with the edge and you're gonna turn as you go and just keep lining it up. And what'll happen is the binding will stretch as you turn and then you'll end up with like this little kind of ruffly thing. It's not, it's not super bad and don't pull it very hard. Right, okay. Just keep it, just keep it lined up with the edge of your um, quilt. And you're just taking a few stitches at Just a, a few stitches going nice and slow and trying to keep as, as straight as you can. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky, but I didn't, I didn't change my stitch length. I didn't do anything. It's my normal, what I would do to, to put on straight grain binding. Okay. So. And I'm just gonna keep on going right around that curved edge. can be kind of scary at first, but it is not as hard as, as you might think, I promise. It's true of so many things we tell ourselves. Are That's hard. <laughs> that is so true. It always seems harder than it is. And it's totally okay to cut out a few circles and practice a few times before you do the real thing. Because mm -hmm. that's how we learn and, and how we get better. All right, so I'm around far enough now that I think I can close this. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut this flat because it's easier for me to sew together the, t the square edges at this point, um, just because I don't have an exact measurement right now. So I'm gonna trim this straight and I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna take it out of the machine just to show you uh, what I'm gonna do here. Let me move this. So I'm going to kind of hand hold it down, but I'm going to open, actually, I'm going to overlap them. Sorry, I'm not going to open it yet. I'm going to overlap them by the two and a half inches, which you can use your little piece that you cut. Just lay it in there. And uh, you're kind of, you're kind of guessing a little bit. Try not to pull too much. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little hot secret that <laughs> I don't usually say because it's not really accurate, but I always cut my binding like an eighth of an inch short 
so that um, it doesn't end up with too much binding and not enough quilt. Yeah, that's so, a really good tip actually. Yeah, and, and because you can usually stretch the binding just enough, an eighth is, is not a lot, but it makes all the difference for me. And I think it actually helps a lot too with bias because you don't want it to be too, you don't want it to be rumply. Right, and it naturally stretches on the bias. So. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna cut it about an eighth of an inch shorter than the width of the two and a half inch width. Okay. Right? I'm trying to get a nice straight cut. Okay, then we're closing it the exact same way we do with normal straight grain. We're gonna fold this, this one up and fold this one over and we're gonna lay them on top of each other and sew from top left to bottom right. Okay. Okay. And so it's I've just the very same way. The exact same way. Okay. Yep. And I've, I've got a little too close on this, so I'm just gonna pull that back just a tiny bit to give myself some room. It's okay to do that, by the way. You're not stuck just because it's already sewn. All right. It's a little fiddly, but you know, Closing binding is, is just fiddly, that's what it is. So I get my, my top lined up really good and then I set the presser foot on it to hold it. Nice. And go back and uh, double check that I, I've got no wrinkles or folds and my, my uh, base point is lined up and then it's just sewing from corner to corner. And it helps if you have a uh, like seam tape if you want, and you can draw the line if you want. Either way works. I'm an I'm a eyeballer. I guess I get that from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then you can, you can test it out and see, and it looks like I'm gonna be okay, so I'm gonna trim this off. And then we're just gonna continue to go all the way around that circle and close this up. I gotta say it's a lot easier than I expected. It really is. I, I don't do it often, but um, it is much easier than you would think. And because it's biased, you have that little extra stretch and you can kind of just make it work. And then I'm gonna do a little back stitch where I start and stop. Okay. So you can see now, all you've gotta do is flip it around to the other side and hand stitch it closed. Maybe use some wonder clips and stitch it as you go. Okay. Works perfect. So that actually leads into a question we have from Vicki. She said, Misty made a pot holder on Missouri Star Live that was a circle. I'd never joined binding on a circle. How do you do that? So you've just shown us that. Is it any different when you have a pot holder which has more layers? <clears throat> so it shouldn't be any different. I actually have one of Misty's here just because uh, we, we had the question. And so she has her layers. These are pinned really well. I would want to probably make sure that that all stays in place. And I would start and stop not where the layers connect. I would do that over here. So um, yeah, this binding looks okay. We could add that to it. But I would start about here and then go all the way around. So these just get stitched over. Okay. And then join it again, just like we did on this other piece. And same thing. Easy peasy. Should be, yeah, should be easy, easy peasy. All right, thanks. We're gonna make all question. the circle pot holders now. Woohoo. <laughs> All right, one last question we have is from Marnie. She says, I cut scallops. How do I attach the bias binding in the valleys? Okay, so that is one of my mom's favorite tricks. She loves talking about this. Um, and I have a little sample here. So I will show you. I've got, I've got quite a bit of the binding sewn on already and I've already closed the edge. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna show you this part right, whoops, upside down, okay. So I'm going to start, this is the, this is the corner. Mm -hmm. So we'll go around the corner and then we'll go and do a couple of the valleys, okay? Okay. All right, so this goes on just the same way that our circle binding did that we showed earlier. We're, we have bias binding, by the way, don't do scallops without bias because that will be di very difficult. Right. Not fun at all and we'll test your patience. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna continue going around the curve, very gently curving our 
binding to match the curve of the quilt. And it's good, it's good to adjust where the quilt is as you go because you don't want to tug too hard in one direction or the other. Alrighty, so I am almost to this little valley here. And this is mom's favorite thing. So what do you do? You just pull it straight. So that's it. That's it. You just straighten it out and keep right on going. <laughs> and then it will create its own little peaky edge and you flip it to the back and stitch just like normal. Okay. So you don't so have to have a full circle. Get, I'll get to another one here in just a minute. Go all the way around. And see how it how it bumps in here. We're just going to pull it straight, so you stitch straight across. And then you're going to go back up to your curve. finished this one. So see how that goes? So you just where, pull it, it where it bends, you just pull it straight and so straight across. That is easy. And then easy. when you flip it, you're, you're going to do the same thing on the back as your hand stitching. Pull it straight and then when it relaxes, it'll just make a little, a little dip. Nice. Like, it looks great. Super easy. Way less intimidating than it seems like it would be. So, yep. Another, another kind of hot tip. <laughs> yeah. I, um, and mom does this too. If you're binding, if you feel like it's going to be difficult to like hold on to, um, you can press it back with your iron ahead of time. So just, just putting your quilt down and pressing your, uh, your binding away from the quilt top. It helps you to pull it, it around to the front. Yes. The it gives it just that little bit of steam and pressure and then when you're fo folding it over the back it's just so much easier okay instead of fighting against it it's already there for you it's literally a hot tip so yes press it back. <laughs> yes press your binding back it just helps so much like makes life so much easier okay well we hope these have answered your questions about curves and circles and mm -hmm. bias binding and if you have more questions, always ask those in our comments. We love seeing your comments and questions. And be sure to subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss another episode of The Final Stitch. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that we've inspired you and given you courage to try curves. Have a great week.